Praise the Lord, Gospel Tabernacle. Praise the Lord, Henrietta, surrounding communities. We wish you well on this eve of Christmas Eve. Pray that you and your families are doing well. We know that a lot of loved ones and families that are connected to our church and churches have been facing some very challenging times during this season. We want each and every one of you to know that you are in our prayers. We pray that God is ministering to you even right now. Even with all that we have faced and all the difficulties, I'm thankful that I know Jesus today. I don't want to be very long today, so I wanted to take a few minutes and recognize the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and thank Him that He chose to come to this earth and to bring salvation unto men. I just got a little message I want to talk to us here a little bit. Um, uh, this message, I've, I've had it for quite some time. Uh, not preaching it verbatim like I have in times past. But I want to talk to us for a little bit tonight about His star still shines for seeking hearts. This thought came to me several years ago. Um, probably close to, oh, probably around 13 years ago. <coughs> and uh, we had an elder in our church. Let me tell a quick story here. My, my grandfather, who was more like a dad to me than anything, uh, I believe it was 1978, the year he went to pastor in Poto, Oklahoma. When he got to that church to pastor, there was just a handful of women that was keeping it going. At that time, it was still down by the railroad tracks there in Poto. And uh, had a precious lady in it named Sister Tyler. And I believe, if I remember right, Sister Tyler, I know, had, I believe, three daughters. And uh, one of the daughters was also an elder, my elder in the church. Her name was Sister Armstrong. And so years ago, about 13 years ago, Sister Armstrong gave me a, a Christmas card. And what was cool about that is, uh, what I was getting at, was my grandpa pastored there. And then years later, in 2006, I was elected to be the pastor there. And Sister Armstrong had uh, been there when my grandpa first came. And uh, she was there when I was pastor. And if she was, she's went on to her reward now, but if she was still here, I'm sure she'd still be there supporting the church in every way that she could. But she gave me a Christmas card one year. And... Uh, that card had this saying on it, His star still shines for seeking hearts. And I just felt it really grabbed my attention. And uh, the Lord began to, to speak to me through that Christmas card. We'll go ahead and look at some scripture text here. We're all going to be familiar. If you've read any of the Christmas accounts uh, year after year, we're all familiar with these scriptures. Now when Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he that is born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east and are come to worship him. When Herod the king had heard these things, he, he was troubled and all Jerusalem with him. And when he had gathered all the chief priests and scribes of the people together, he demanded of them where Christ should be born. And they said unto him in Bethlehem of Judea, for thus it is written by the prophet. 
and thou, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, art not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come a governor that shall rule my people Israel. Then Herod, when he had privily called the wise men, inquired of them diligently what time the star appeared. So apparently this star wasn't revealed to everyone. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search diligently for the young child, and when you have found him, bring me word again that I may come and worship him also. <coughs> and when they had heard the king, they departed. And lo, the star, which they saw in the east, went before them, till it came and stood over where the young child was. And when they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceeding great joy. And when they were come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and fell down and worshipped him. And when they had opened their treasures, they presented unto him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. just want to talk to us once again for a few moments tonight about his star still shines for seeking hearts. I love this Christmas account. A um, couple years ago, we were at Silver Dollar City. <coughs> and as most of us that's probably listening to this knows, they do an outstanding Christmas display. And they reenacted this birth of Christ. And they had the wise man came coming there. And it's a, it's a very tremendous presentation they do this has always been one of my my favorite uh christmas plays watching the wise men come and and bow down and and worship the babe christ jesus presenting their gifts as i stated already the scripture indicates to us that apparently there was a star that appeared that these wise men were looking for and either King Herod and the Jews uh, did not have the revelation of this star, whether they, uh, there's all kinds of speculation about what all this entails, and I'll let you study it out for yourself and draw your own conclusions. But for whatever, whatever the case might be, they apparently, these wise men had a revelation of this star um, that others did not. And then, this star, as we read in the scripture just now, uh, supernaturally it guided them to the place where Jesus Christ was at. The first thing that I want to point out to us about this Christmas story is during the birth of Christ, there was those that were searching for him, and there were those that for whatever reason, they were not. And we can see, and this is kind of what, this is how my mind works, I guess, but it intrigues me that the people that should have been looking for him, the people, you know, the Bible says he came to his own and his own received him not. The people that should have had the most information about him, that should have been watching for him, that should have been looking for his birth, and should have known all the signs um, about his coming, they were not looking for him. And as we find out, we find these uh, wise men. Now, typically they're uh, identified as three men, but we don't know that for sure. The Bible doesn't state how many. It just talks about the three different gifts that's presented. We don't even know how much of these gifts were presented, or how many wise men there were. But one thing we do know is that they weren't Jews, and uh, they were not Hebrews. Now, some speculate they may have a, some kind of connection, but uh, as far as we know, these men were Gentiles. And so we have these men way out in the outskirts somewhere, outside of Judea, that are watching for this 
sign of the Messiah. The first thing that I want to point out in this little message tonight is the point of it all is this. There's, it's, it doesn't matter how far out of touch with God that it may seem that we are. And any of us that have lived any length of time, we have probably had times in our life when we felt like we were a million miles away from God. But the moment that we begin to seek for Him, as these wise men did, the moment that we our heart turns towards Him and we begin to seek Him, God will send a star our way, or can I say it like this? God will send some kind of beacon, some kind of guiding light. He'll send something in our path that will point and lead us in a way more to Him. I don't want to glorify my past in any way, but I am required to give you my testimony. And I'll just tell you that several years ago, I was in a very bad place. I was in a, um, a county jail. And this jail, it's been uh, re-engineered, rebuilt, a, a whole new facility now. <clears throat> I believe it's on the ground level now. But back when I was there, what they had done is they took an old uh, brig off of a, uh, believe it was some kind of military ship. They took the brig off of that ship and put it up on top of the LaFord County Courthouse. And that's, uh, it was enclosed, and then that's what the county jail was. You were, it was on top of the courthouse, and it was an old brig. Uh, it was very, uh, it wasn't comforting at all. I could tell you all the details, but just let's just leave it to say that it was somewhere no one wanted to be. And uh, this was my second trip through there. And the last time uh, that I had come in contact with the wrong side of the law, there was a judge there named Ted Knight. Now, after all this, I got in church. Uh, judge Knight, almost called him Brother Knight. Uh, judge Knight uh, seen me and even talked about wanting to have me come speak at some things. But anyway, uh, Judge Knight, it was all my fault, of course. I was, I was a, being a horrible person, but told me, he said, the next time I see you, if I see you again in my courtroom, he said, you will go to prison. Well, this was that time. Um, so I'm sitting in the county jail. I had no doubt in my mind that I was going to prison. And I want you to really understand what I'm about to tell you. I had already made bargains with God in the past. And most of the time, if, if I did feel like he answered them, I didn't keep my end of the bargain. And this was not the case at this time uh, with me in, in this particular situation. I knew I was going to prison. I knew that I deserved it. I was tired. I was tired of the life I was living. I was tired of it, just everything. I was, I was, uh, uh, even if, uh, I don't know if I fully understood it then or not, but I was spiritually drained as well. And I just, I was, I was done. And God, it would be, it'd take a long time for me to tell the whole story, but God began to deal with me in this low point of my life. And I, I, talked to God from the deep of my heart and I didn't try to bargain with him. I didn't try to buy God off. I just told him, you know, I know that what's going to happen to me, but when I get out of prison, I'm going to serve you. Not that I couldn't serve him in prison, but when I had my freedom once again, that I was going to serve him and go to church and do all the things I felt like he was calling me to do. And around this time, uh, there were some men that came through the jail, and uh, they were connected with the uh, some kind of Gideon Association. 
and they would bring reading glasses and they would bring the little handheld Bibles that's got the New Testament and Psalms and Proverbs. They'd bring these Bibles and give them away. Now, the only people that had came to visit me uh, in this place, my mom and grandma came once that I remember, and they were bawling and crying the whole time. My grandpa, who was a still licensed minister, even though he was retired, he got to come on certain days and visit with me one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, they would bring me into an office area. That's how old this jail was. There wasn't any kind of visitation, really, uh, visitation place. They just kind of, <laughs> it was a weird deal. Anyway, uh, I got to see him. And outside of that, there was no one else that came to see me. These men with the Gideons came and handed out reading glasses and Bibles. I got me a Bible. Uh, I, I forgot to mention my dad did come. My my dad uh, did come see me, and this is kind of how it all really started to escalate. But he, my dad, for I don't know why he had started going to church and was in this revival. This revival had been going on for several weeks, and when he came to visit me in the county jail, he was telling me about all this. So uh, visitors, I had my dad, my mom, my grandma, grandpa, that was it. Um, I started to read this Bible that the Gideons had brought. And I had been raised around church by my grandparents, and I had even received a new birth as a young person, a very young person, uh, coming to my teenage years, and I backslid and, and went on the wrong path. But as I began to read, I was just kind of talking to God, and I was saying, God, if, if you're even real and you're still with me and all the things that I've felt like I knew, and there was times even in sin when... I just kind of felt like God had his hand on me. I, I'm not saying God bless his sin, but I just, uh, even, the, I guess what I'm trying to say is I was trying to run from God, and it never seemed like I could really get away from him. And I was just kind of talking to him and saying, God, you know, if you are there and you're still there, then I need you to show me. And <clears throat> it's it may be hard for you to understand, but as I was reading and talking to the Lord in this place, it seemed like the red letters. I was I remember I was reading the Gospel of John, uh, and I didn't really have all the understanding of everything that I have now, but I was reading the Gospel of John, and the red letters of Christ, uh, they just kind of began to glow on the page and just kind of burn themselves into my and to my mind and to my heart. And I knew then uh, that God had heard me and was answering uh, me and what I was talking to him. The reason I wanted to tell you that is because even in one of the worst places I had ever been and on a, a path that I necessarily didn't want to be on, but there, and by the way, um, I didn't have to go to prison. Um there were some other things that happened. It's, it was a miracle. But anyway, I did keep my promise to God. It wasn't a false bargain. I did keep my promise, and I'm in church today. But the moment, what I'm getting at is I seemed a million miles away. And every Even my grandmas, I think she kind of had give up on me. I think they all thought that, you know, it was over. I was going to prison, probably going to become institutionalized. And... um but none of that happened. And the moment that I began to seek the Lord, he sent, uh, if you want to call it, he sent a star my way. And he began to guide me back to him. I'm so thankful for that. I'm so, uh, could my path have been easier? It could have. But I'm so thankful for all the things that, uh, as bad as I messed up, the Lord's grace was there. And he helped me. So, how do we how do we have a seeking heart and how does all these things work now uh, I want to give you another scripture here this is Jesus speaking 
He said, search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. And they are they which testify of me. I want to say to everyone that's, if you're still listening to me, the greatest thing that you can do in your relationship with Jesus Christ, your relationship with God Almighty, the greatest thing that you can do is to read your Bible. Don't take the word of somebody else. Don't be so lazy that you don't read the Bible. Pick it up and read it. You'll be surprised the difference it makes the first time you read your Bible through, from cover to cover. Don't just read a part and cut out parts you don't like. Uh, or you get tired of hearing the genealogies, or you get tired of hearing about the tabernacle plan, and you stop. Don't do that. Read it. Read it from cover to cover. You'll be surprised the difference it makes in your relationship with God. Now, for us to really grasp what Jesus is trying to say here, if you'll permit me, I know that we are not to change Scripture, but you can look at this in other translations. I believe that it would be okay for me to say this. Search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. And if we can change that and to a but. For in them you think you have eternal life, but they are they which testify of me. The scripture is to lead us to Jesus. And if we start to read it, it will lead us to Jesus. He is the word, the word uh, in flesh. And so... Uh, we begin to read the Word of God, it will always lead us to Jesus Christ. And, uh, you know, these people he was speaking to, uh, they knew the law inside and out, but it was just a letter to them. The Word of God is to bring us into a relationship, not to bring us into a, a legalistic mindset, but it's to bring us into a relationship with God. His star still shines. When you look in the scripture, there's a connection with the stars and the sky and with angels. Um, here, this is the King James Version because I didn't want anybody to think I was trying to, to manipulate, but it says, How art thou fallen, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer? Son of the morning. Now, you can look at many other translations, and it'll call him the star or the morning star. How art thou cut down to the ground, which this week in the nations? I want to be clear right here. This is We know that Lucifer, the fallen angel, is Satan. But when it's talking about him being a star and the morning star, this is speaking of his original state, uh, Originally, he was a powerful angel and the angel of light. And um, apparently, he was a morning star. Revelation chapter 1, verse 20, The mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. And probably one of the most uh, compelling is Job 38 and 7, when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. It makes me think of this verse. I know most people relate this verse with actual stars. But the psalmist says that God telleth the number of the stars and he calleth them all by their names. Science would tell us that Stars in the sky at night are, are balls of burning gas several light years away. So far, our minds can't even comprehend how far they are. And I don't discredit the science behind this, but my mind wonders, uh, my person wonders, if there could be more to this, to some of the stars, than just physical science. We can tell by reading the scripture that we read, the star the wise men followed was no ordinary star. And I'm not trying to create a new doctrine or anything. I believe I presented some solid scriptural evidence relating stars and angels. But 
Could it be possible that this light, this star that the wise men was following, that it was uh, an angel or even powered by an angel? We know that in the other account of of Jesus' birth and Luke, that the shepherds came and there was an angelic host that was there to proclaim his birth and the light that shone around them. So in my my opinion, it's very possible. Whether you want to agree with that or not is fine. Um, but the point I'm trying to make is, you see there in Revelation where it said the seven stars are the seven angels of the church. When the book of Revelation talks about angels there in those churches, it's not talking about the angel that we think of most of the time, the, the angel of heaven that's very mighty and powerful, but it's actually speaking of the pastors or the preachers of those churches, the messengers, if you will, to those churches. And uh, I'm getting ready to wrap this up with this thought, and I hope that you'll understand what I'm saying. Acts chapter 10 tells us about a man named Cornelius. Cornelius was also himself a Gentile, uh, and the dispensation of time of salvation going to the Gentiles had not happened yet. But Cornelius prayed to God like no other, and Cornelius gave alms. And when I say that he gave alms, that means that he gave to the needs of poor and needy people and it was private. He didn't make a spectacle out of it. Nobody probably really even knew it other than some of his family members just because it was impossible for them not to know in, in God. And Cornelius had done this with so consistently and with such a pure heart that the Bible tells us that Cornelius, I don't even know that he realized he'd done it, but because of these things, he built up a memorial before God. And every time God would look somewhere, there'd be this memorial of Cornelius. And so God sent Cornelius two angels. The first angel was a spiritual angel. It came to Cornelius in a vision. And that angel told him about another angel that was going to come. And if you'll permit me to present it this way, this was an angel of flesh by the name of Simon Peter. When I say angel, I'm talking about Peter was the messenger of, of God. He was the messenger of Christ. He was the one that was given the keys to the kingdom. And the angel said, Simon Peter, a man named Simon Peter is going to come and tell you what you must do. I want to tell us today that if we, when our heart becomes hungry, when our heart begins to seek for God, his star still shines for seeking hearts. We almost it's almost impossible right now even though in times history past they have tried to destroy it. It's almost impossible now for people not to get their hands on a Bible, on the holy scripture. And on top of that, when our heart seeks for God, God will send a person uh, and I want you to understand what I'm saying here. God will send a star. God will send an angel. God will send a messenger. And this is what I want you to understand. It does not have to be a licensed minister. It does not have to be some, someone in the upper echelons of Pentecostal elite, elitism or, or a well-known name. It doesn't have to be anything like that. It can be an everyday, born-again believer that walks with God and has a relationship with Him, God will send someone your way and they will lead and point you and help guide you into a, a, a greater understanding and a greater relationship with Jesus Christ. That's what God did with... Um, Apollos, he was a very eloquent preacher. And I believe it was Priscilla and Aquila that got a hold of him and began to say, hey, what you're preaching is good, but let us expound some other truths to you. 
and they helped Apollos reach a higher level in his relationship with God. God will always send someone. God will send a star. God will send an angel. God will send a messenger to help bring us closer to him. His star still shines for seeking hearts. But we must seek him. I hope as we draw to a conclusion of this year, 2020, I know that we're all probably glad that this year's over with, and we have hopes that the year 2021 will be a, a greater year and that we can put all this behind us. But I pray today that as we look for a, a greater year, that we will also try to seek God in a greater way. And if we will, I promise you that God will send a star. God's star still shines for seeking hearts. I pray that you have a very Merry Christmas. Have an outstanding time with friends and family and loved ones. I pray that you have a blessed New Year and that you would be safe and that you would have a time of blessing. God bless, and we will see you next week.